Good evening and welcome to Monday, September 16th, 2013. This is a special meeting including the annual minutes of the Board of Trustees for the Facilities Corporation. It's a short meeting and then we'll get into the regular board meeting after that. Could we have a roll call please? President Schmidt. Here. Mr. Duchon. Here. Trustee Hernandez. Here. Trustee Johnston. Here. Trustee Mendez. Here. Trustee Schaefer. Here. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Ford. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Daisy, would you lead us in the slides, please? Please have those Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Thank you. And we will take public verbal comments for the Facilities Corporation, if there are any. I have some pink slips, but I know that those are for the meeting. We'll start in a few minutes. Is there anyone for Facilities? Seeing none, we will move on. And item A is to ratify the appointment of officers pursuant to the Haruka School Facilities Corporation bylaws and articles of incorporations. And so the sitting president of the board <coughs> is president of the facilities. The clerk is the clerk for facilities. The superintendent is the secretary. Assistant superintendent of business services is the chief financial officers of the corporation. And the members of the board are act as trustees of the board Board Trustees of the Corporation. So I'm looking for a motion and a second to ratify the appointment of these officers. I'll make a motion. I have a motion for Mr. Schaefer <coughs> and a second for Mrs. Johnston. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion passes 7-0. <laughs> And item B is to approve minutes of the October 3rd, 2011 annual meeting. A copy of these are included in the supporting documents. Move for approval of the minutes. Have a motion by Mr. Mendez. Second. And a second by Mr. Schaefer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain for uh, no, no attendance to that meeting. All right, so motion passes six. Zero one. And item C is to direct staff to prepare an annual report for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2013. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Mendez. Second. A second by Mr. Schaefer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. <coughs> and at this time, if there's no further business, we will adjourn that meeting. And now we will start, actually, we can't start it for three minutes, so we'll take a three minute recess and start our regular open session at 6.10. All right, it is now 6.10, so we will start public session with a roll call again, please. President Schmidt. Here. Trustee Mendez. Here. Trustee Schaefer. Here. Trustee Johnston. Here. Trustee Hernandez? Here. Daisy Carpio? Here. Shaley Fawcett? Here. Amanda Gardner? Here. Thank you. And it has us doing the flag salute again, but I think we can skip that since we're all the same folks and go on to the welcome to, and the 2013 14 student board member reports. Mr. Duchamp. Thank you, President Schmidt, and welcome student board members. So today we will start with Amanda. So. Hello. <laughs> um, well, this week, um, after school tutoring started, and for sports, girls tennis plays against Arna Vista, and football plays against Desert Hot Springs at Desert Hot Springs. Um, girls golf play today at Indian Hills against Canyon Springs. And for homecoming, the club, sports, and class councils are uh, nominating their candidates for homecoming, as well as doing decorations for their spirit wall. And it will be on 
on September 27th versus the Toddlers. Um, we're preparing for our Falcon Fever Homecoming Week with um, Headband Monday, Tie-Dye Tuesday, um, Sundays Wear Wednesday, Black and Gold Thursday, and Class Colors Friday. Uh, the dance will be on Saturday the 28th, starting at 8. Um, this Thursday we'll have coffee with the counselors. Friends are welcomed at 8.15. Um, we've started the process to select three students to go to South Korea. And this week is the Suicide Prevention Week that our um, the crew is doing for our school. And then soon we're going to have the Red Ribbon Week Prevention um, for Pacific Avenue. Where we'll have the link crew leaders go talk to them about drug prevention and things like that. And that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. And then we will go to Daisy for Rupa Valley. Okay. Hi. Um, sorry. Pretty much um, all we have for our school is just a lot of homecoming, getting ready for homecoming. Um, ASB is working real hard for this week's homecoming rally, followed by next week we have our homecoming game, halftime, followed by our dance. We have Spirit Days from Class Colors, Twinsy Tuesday, Crazy Sock Wednesday, Camel Thursday, and Jaguar Friday. Um, since it's our 25 year anniversary of school, we're celebrating and the teachers who have been there for 25 years, we're calling them our grand marshals. So the students get a vote um, online along with the to make homecoming court. It's a really cool website and all you need is like your ID and your pattern, your last name, and everyone can vote online. So it's actually really easy for you to see. And everyone votes, and the grand marshals will be announced at our pep rally on Friday, and they will be crowning our king and queen at next Friday's game. So you're all welcome to attend against Pacific. And um, we had girls volleyball had a tournament this weekend. They did amazing, and so did boys water polo. They both did awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we'll wrap it up with Shaylee. We've had a lot of great things going on at Patriot. We kicked off our first week of fall sports by a win um, for football, volleyball, and our girls' tennis team, which was fantastic, but led to us losing uh, to Valley View in football last Friday night, which was disappointing, but we know the team will be able to come back and hopefully win our homecoming game, which is scheduled for October 10th, and our dance will be on October 11th. Um, our spirit days for homecoming this year include camo day, neon day, Cosmic Day and Class Colors. Homecoming tickets went on sale today, and we've totally reinvented our homecoming this year to hopefully increase the amount of students to participate, and ASB is really hoping for good results from that. We had a really interesting thing happen at Patriot um, with the Memorial of 9-11. We had a lot of nationalism on display at our school, and we had about a dozen students display huge um, American flags in their uh, on their trucks in the parking lot, which was really an interesting sight to see. And it was really uh, something that our staff really was proud of our warriors for showing their nationalism on that day. We've had a lot of community service things going on at Patriot. On September 10th, we had our first fall blood drive where we collected over 150 pints of blood, which is equivalent to saving 450 lives. Um, we also had our first ever night of service this past Saturday where we had dozens of um, students come and paint our trash cans around campus and they were probably on display today. Um, each club got their own trash can and got to decorate it however they chose and it really brightened up our campus and will hopefully um, help with our trash problem too at Patriot. Um, we've had lots of senior activities going on including senior personality votings. Senior shirts are now available, and we also have senior movie night coming up, which we know the class of 14 is really excited about. Uh, that's all that we have going on. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And next we will move to public verbal comment. And speakers have the right to their own opinions, and neither board members nor staff will be responding to these opinions. And the district's silence should not be mistaken for agreement but simply to avoid legal entanglements and or to protect the privacy of situations that may involve lawsuits, employee discipline, or dismissal. And please be assured any serious allegations have been or will be investigated thoroughly. Any responses from the board will take place during the board member comments. And to remind everyone that tonight's meeting is um, vid both video and audio recorded. And each speaker will have five minutes. And 
and there's a light up here. It'll start green at five minutes. At one minute left, it'll go to yellow, and at the red, please wrap it up quickly or we will ask you to step away. Um, first, we have Gabriella Anaya. Not in here right now. Lily Thompson. Hi, good, good afternoon. Good evening. Um, I'm one of the parents and do the voluntary motion in our battle. Um, I'm here, I'm, my concern is because about the gate, the back gate of the INR buckle. Um, we wanted to reinstate it that if they can open after the day together, because I don't drive yet. And uh, if my husband is not home, I had to pick it up the kids and I don't want to pass by at the, you know, the front, the front, um, uh, the front, um, the mission, the mission, which is really very, very, um, very busy street. That's, Last year, my daughter, she got hit from the bike, and she's with my husband, but uh, he couldn't get the guy. So I don't want this to happen this year. So last year, we really fight about this, you know, and uh, they listened to us. They opened the back gate. We were really asking and begging for 5.30 to 6 or 6.30 until we pick it up our children from the team together, because it's not really very safe to pass by, you know, in front at the Mission Street is not really very, very um, safety. You know, my concern, I'm also pregnant and I'm not, um, I don't want to drag my kids in front, you know. And last Friday, uh, one of my neighbors, she's a seventh grade, and she was running. She was running and she said that there's a two guy that's really asking her a lot of questions and then she's running and then she found me at the, I was waiting my husband at the, um, you know, like at the, in front of Ayn Arbuckle, and she told me that there's a two guys following her. And this is in front of that, where is the mission? You know, she's walking from, she's seventh grade. She's a seventh grade, and this is really not, really very, very um, safe. If we really want this for the safety of our children, we only wanted to ask the 5.30 to 6.30 between of that, that time that we wanted to get our children from our school. That's only my concern too. So hopefully everyone our concern as a parents. Uh, thank you so much. Can I ask a qualifying question? Mm -hmm. Is, did you report this to the site principal? Um, no, I didn't report because this has happened Friday. But today I was, um, I, I do every day, um, I do every day my volunteering, but I went home early today, like about 11.30, because I don't feel good. So you reported no one? Yeah, but at the run, we dropped the, the girl, uh, our neighbor, my husband and I, we dropped her at home, and, and the grandma, she told the grandma, and the grandma called right away to share it. And she called yes, her. yes. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. My same question. Next we have, the only thing down here is E. Is there some of the, it just has an E on it. And then what after that? And Gabriella Onea. Are you looking one paper? I've got three papers here. Actually, could you go ahead and I'm Eric Thompson, and I can kind of elaborate a bit more on what she then I, I'm assuming that you're, you I'm filled out. Thompson. I'm Eric Thompson. Maybe I was in such a hurry, I might have skipped the line. You, you just put an E. So you were the next one I was calling. Come Somebody ahead. Was asking a question. Come Somebody ahead on that. A question and I made, I'm sorry. I'm no problem. Lost my place when I was doing it. It's supposed to be Eric Thompson. At any rate, I, let me elaborate a little bit. Um, the seventh grader, she's no longer a student then, obviously, but she used to be. But I was meeting with our daughters teacher, and my wife was waiting in the parking lot, and this girl named Alyssa came running from Mission Boulevard 
onto Ina Arbuckle because she was trying to find some relief for these two guys. And you know, this kind of thing happens all the time out there. You know, we have another mother who was going to be here today. I'm very surprised she didn't make it. She she told me she she had a ride. Um, a lot of a lot of our parents. I have three pages of parents who signed who who agree with us that they want to see these back gates open in the afternoon, just from 5:30 to 6:30. Um, I'm very I'm very confused because you know they. Uh, Think together is claiming this is a safety issue. It's 5.30 in the afternoon. Most of the kids are already gone. If this is a safety issue, then how come the kids get how come the gates open at 3.30? Or I'm sorry, 2.30, when the kids are getting out at 2.30. I mean, seriously. This is a safety issue to us. My daughter was hit on that street, right in front of me, by a bicyclist. It's a very busy street. There's two hot dispensaries on that street. There's liquor stores below galore on that street. It's extremely busy. We've got pedophiles out there, obviously. There's a police report file. Uh, uh, it, it just happened. You know, maybe you guys, because you have access, and you have, uh, 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 maybe you can have them look it up. You know, it's, it, her name's Darlissa, that's her first name. Her grandmother's Dolores. Um, she, she was scared out of her mind. And these were grown men being very provocative with her, you know, very inappropriate. And she, she ducked into her, you know, trying to find relief there at Ima and found my wife who was waiting for me while I was meeting with my daughter's teacher. So, um, you know, so there's a multitude, you know, one of the mothers, I, 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 one of the mothers who's been here today, her brother was killed on, on, on mission. We don't want our kids on a mission. You know, that, and I hate to bring this up, I'm really sorry, because I'm not like this, but there are people who are. If you guys are thinking about some crazy liability things, liability issues, if that's what's on your mind, Think about this, if something happens to somebody out there, to a mother or to a kid, some lawyer's gonna say, hey, you know what? They shouldn't even been out there on that street. This wouldn't have happened, because they shouldn't even been there, because they should have been able to go out the back gate like they used to last year. So I only bring this up because there's a lie, the flip side, there's a liability as well. You know, and again, I'm not like that, but there are people who are. You know, a lot of attorneys, I grew up around a bunch of attorneys, so I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Um, let me get my list here. As a multitude, if we could stop the clock for just a moment, I would like to know, I would like to know who is it that's made this decision for these gates to be locked in the afternoon at five, uh, when we can no longer get our kids out? Because I have plenty of responses, which would be, rather than go through all of them and burn up my five minutes, I have a reason why it's not a good idea. And I can just respond in kind to the reasons you guys have closed the gate. I don't know who is responsible for closing. Has it gotten to your level, or is it still down on the lower level? This is public verbal comment. We will not okay. engage in all right, conversation. All right. Well, I, uh, I'll just. Uh, you may, if you don't want to go through well, all that, you, you, you can. You're, you're welcome to leave that for us to read well, at a later just, time. It's my notes. That's I'll fine. Maybe, I'll make it more legible no and then leave us, but I'll go through as much as I can, as much as time will allow. Uh, it, it's. It's, it's just really, it's, 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 and again, this is another uncomfortable thing that has to be brought up. Um, if there are going to be, if this, you know, truly is a safety issue, which is the claims that I'm hearing that it's a safety issue, if they're trying to keep the site secure, and that's why those gates are locked, and, and they need to be locked during the day. We're only asking for them to be all unlocked between 5.30 and 6.30 when we're getting our kids when we're retrieving our kids from Think Together, the after school program, okay? Most people are already gone by then. If there was anybody gonna do anything, they're not gonna come at 5.30 in the afternoon. Somebody with ill intent, they're gonna come at 11. When is everybody's there? They're not gonna come at 5.30 in the afternoon. And even if there was just somebody to come at 5.30 in the afternoon, it's better to have three escapes than to have only one. Because a, a guy, a mass murderer, even a couple of them, they're not going to be able to contain all the exits if you've got multiple exits. If you've got one exit, he's got us locked down. He's got us locked down until the sheriffs get there. And then he's going to shoot it out with the sheriffs. We're all locked down. We can't get out. So there's yet another reason why it's not safe for those back gates to be locked. And again, 5.30 to 6.30. We're not talking about them being open all day. We're only talking about them being open from 5.30 to 6.30, when most everybody's already gone anyway. This all started with a guy named Brad Post. He's a science supervisor. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, did I run out of time? <laughs> yeah. wow. Yes. But, uh, okay. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate your concerns. Okay. When's the next board meeting? In two, two weeks. 
Thank you. October. That's oh. October 7th. Okay, I was looking at your faces. I wasn't looking at the lights. No, and, Madam Chair. And no. you may, Madam Chair. if you want to um, print that up, and you can, we've got well, our email know, address, have, and you can email it. I do have something it. you guys can have. I have a list of all the parents who have signed wanting, they want those back gates open from 530 to 630. Um, if you leave it here with Mr. Jabrowski, he'll. There are, there, I, I, I apologize in advance if there's a little bit, because my wife gathered signatures for a couple days and I did it for a couple days. There may be a minor amount of duplication, but I've made notes and I've crossed some names out trying to eliminate the duplication. Okay? And, Thank and you very I'll, much. I'll work on making this more legible. No problem. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Mr. Hernandez. I was going to ask you, would you consider extending this time just a little bit longer because we're talking about uh, uh, child safety, and I wanted to hear just a little bit more. But if you've already cut off his public uh, opportunity, then so be it. That would be no. at the discretion of the rest of the board. Yeah. Being that it's a safety issue, uh, if we don't hear from him anymore tonight, when will we be addressed on this issue? But that's if he. He has not filed anything. His next step would be to submit his list of um, requests and the items that he was his notes in a as he as he stated a more legible or in letter format to the district, and then we can be appraised of that. So if you could email it to Mr. Go ahead and put it. However, if you have email. Email it to Mr. Duchamp's office, or if you don't, you can drop it off at the um, Ina R. Buckle at the office, and they'll make sure that it so gets delivered. Address, please? Just, uh, I don't have it. If you go on the website, all of all of our email addresses are in there under the board. Okay. okay. Uh, just it'll. She's saying email it to the superintendent. His yes. email address to the superintendent. Okay. I'll leave you, Sean. Mr. Thompson, if you send that to me, a, a, a staff member will meet with you to discuss the matter, and we'll provide a report to the board in the, in the Friday letter. Okay, and I can't emphasize enough, there's a lot of parents, they just couldn't come, they just can't make it. We understand. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Madam Chair, is it possible yes. that we copy what he has tonight and return the original back to him? It's really illegible. That's <laughs> he, he's, he's saying that it's hard to read, so it would be in his best interest. If you want to go through and just organize it, then, then we have a clear I just write things down as they came to me, so I, yeah. I do need to organize it. I understand. <laughs> I would love you to have it tonight, but just, I just think you wanted that. I thought you wanted Thank that. you. Thank you. All right, seeing no other slips. Oh, did Gabriella? Thank you. All right, seeing no other public verbal comments. You, if you can grab a pink slip and just bring it up with you. You can go ahead and 
fill it out after you're done talking and just okay. hand it to me. Hi, my name is Ariana Ortega. I have three ki two kids and Ina. And my concern is a uh, backdoor too because the liquor stores and the cars, one of my kids have A, B, D. So for me to control him walking all around, because I live in Ruidu and 34. So for me to go all around is for me to be controlling him running around in the car, just going through traffic and parking lots and if I just walk <coughs> down to the back gate, it's not that far for him to, or for me to be controlling, or the cars going fast, or anything else happening. Because he's really, he sees everything. So when I get home, mom, why is the guy right there smoking? Why is the guy, I'm trying to get my kids not to be looking at all that. But if I pass through all of that, it's like if I'm showing them, and it's like, it's not, it's bad for them to be looking at that. I know kids have to see all that, but at a young age, I don't think they have to be like concerned about what about if that guy hurts me? What about if someone runs me over? I don't want that for my kids. I mean, I moved here from my money, and I moved because of the same reason. Because I don't want it to see my child walking from school. I don't have a car. So the rain, bad weather, hot weather, you don't know what's going to happen if you go outside. You don't know nothing like that. But the thing is, everything needs a gate open. Just for that moment that we have to go pick them up. That's my main concern. Thank you very much. Thank Do you. I yeah, thank you. Just finish it and drop it right there at the end. Thank you. And next, Ms. Rash, we have a report out from closed session. Yes, in a vote of five to zero, the board approved the issuance of a notice of intent to dismiss and statement of charges to employee number 187153. Thank you. And next we have administrative reports and written communications. Item 3A is report on transition to common core state standards. Mr. Jabrowski. Thank you. Tonight I wanted to talk to uh, you about a couple of things coming out of Sacramento in the last few weeks. One being the next generation science standards and the other assembly bill 484. Um, in the brief little packet we've given you, on the, the front page you can see a release from the CDE that talks about the State Board adopting the Next Generation Science Standards. A as you know, the Language Arts and Common Core Standards were adopted in 2010. And in the Language Arts Standards, there are literacy standards for the content areas, um, which has been one set of guidance for our uh, non-language arts and math teachers, such as science teachers. But this Work has been going on over time. California has been a major player in the development of these next generation science standards. And we were one of the early states to adopt them. I, I was told it was, that we were in the second state. Um, something interesting, if you turn to the second page, the standards are written around what they call three dimensions. Um, and you'll see some real parallels to some of the language arts and math standards themselves as well. The first dimension is practices, which are behaviors that scientists utilize as they investigate and build models and theories. So these are the kinds of behaviors that, regardless of the grade level, regardless of the science subject at the secondary level, these practices are things that we want to teach our kids all the way throughout their experience in science. The second dimension is cross-cutting concepts, which are concepts that apply across all the different domains of science. And you can see a list there. They include things like patterns, similarity, diversity, cause and effect, and, and some other things that, um, regardless, again, of the class that they are in, these patterns are important aspects of science education. The third part is disciplinary core ideas. And this is when it comes to the actual science content itself. It's built around core concepts that follow kids, um, much like language arts and math, from, from the beginning of their educational experience to the end. And so for a, um, a content area to be considered core, it should have these bulleted areas like broad importance across multiple sciences, a uh, key tool for understanding interests in the life experience of students. Again, a lot of similarities between our language arts and math standards with this as well. 
and then be teachable and learnable over multiple grades and increasing levels of depth and specific uh, depth and sophistication. So we'll hear more about this as the state begins to give us some guidance. They'll have to, like they are now with language arts and math, developing a framework and, and some materials, and that'll happen over time. Um, but we're very excited to see these new next generation science standards. I think they will be uh, really beneficial for our kids. And I have a one and a half minute video. It's a commercial produced by the next generation science people. So we're gonna play that for you real quick, just to give you a sense of some of the things they're saying about the benefits. Logically advancing world, we are living at the speed of science. And we need to educate our students to be scientifically literate, ready to ask questions, define problems, investigate, analyze data, construct explanations, and design solutions, ready to take on the future. The Next Generation Science Standards provide an important opportunity to improve not only science education, but also student achievement, reflecting a new vision for American science education, creating a context for learning, comprehending the core knowledge and ideas, and engaging in scientific and engineering practices helps to prepare students for broader understanding and deeper levels of scientific and engineering investigation later on in high school, college, and beyond. Five states, four states. The Next Generation Science Standards were developed by a team of experts and stakeholders in science and engineering, K through 12 in higher education, and industry in an open, collaborative, state-led process. The standards are internationally benchmarked against countries whose students perform well in math and science. Implementing improved K through 12 science standards will better prepare high school graduates to succeed in college and careers. Enabling employers to hire workers with strong science-based knowledge and skills, critical thinking, and inquiry-based problem solving. Educating students for the future. Educating students at the speed of science. The next generation science standards. Four states, five states. Okay, that was science. The other thing is Assembly Bill 484. We talked the last board meeting about um, our accountability results and testing and the STAR test and how we're moving forward into a time of Common Core but had one more year to go with the STAR test. And Mr. Schaefer, I think you asked me, is this going to get better this year? And we talked about how it, it probably wouldn't happen. And, and lo and behold, the state was working on that problem at the same time. And, and I think they got it right. They passed Assembly Bill 484, it's sitting on the governor's desk now. And um, all the indications are is that he's in, in strong support of this bill and will sign it. But what it does is it suspends the CST or the STAR test in language arts and math immediately. So our students would not take another CST this year and implements something called MAP, which is the measure of academic performance and progress which is essentially the Smarter Balance Assessment um, as a pilot, which is what we will be taking the following year in 2015. So all of our students will take a pilot assessment and at the same time it suspends accountability, which means regardless of how students do, um, there will not be an API score or accountability results attached to that pilot this year. There are still some elements of STAR testing that remain for example, the science test at 5th, 8th, and 10th grade will continue as they develop a new one. Um, also, the Kappa test, which is an assessment for our, uh, a, a small population of our special ed students, that will continue, but that was a test developed specifically for a specific population. So, um, we're really excited about this because we've been talking about focusing on the common core transition and doing what's right for our kids all along. So this kind of validates that thinking and um, takes our teachers out of that awkward position of wanting to do what's right and move forward, but being you know concerned about this test that kids would have had to take this May. Now that, now that that won't happen once the governor signs the bill, um, it, it'll be a very good thing for our kids. Mr. Schaefer? This, uh, this measurement, this map, measurement of academic performance and progress, 
what's it going to measure? I mean, compared to the star, how how is it going to uh, compared to the star test? Uh, what is this going to tell us? <coughs> How's it? Well, it'll be different in that it will be a computer given assessment. It will have different types of questions. Questions where instead of, you know, before it was pencil paper and there was A, B, C, or D and you picked one. Now it will be which of the following are correct and it could be three are correct or it could be highlight the particular sentence in the paragraph, move it into the place where it fits in this other area and then write in a few sentences that justify your answer and explain why it's true. Uh, it could be in math you know, if we're talking about geometry, draw this ray in the right spot to make the correct angle or, you know, and I'm just making up examples, but um, it will be very different in that it will measure a lot more conceptual understanding and real world understanding. And, and when you say map, that is the name that California is giving to the Smarter Balance Assessment that will be given in, in like 25, 26 states. Um, but California's got to give it their own special name, I suppose. Um, so it, it, will be, it will be quite different. It will measure the common core grade level standards, and it, but it will do it in a different way. And, and having not seen more than just some release items and taken some practice tests, it's hard to give you much more than that, but we'll know a lot more come this spring. That's what I want to ask. Uh, when preparing for the STAR test, a lot of parents always complain that uh, we're teaching to a test. But we spend so much time preparing for that test. Are we going to go through that rigmarole where that we're going to prepare for this map test just like we did the star test? I think this, the map test is going to be much more rigmarole proof um, in that the questions, A, it's a computer-based assessment and, it, and it's what they call adaptive. Meaning if, if I take this question and I answer it correctly, then I get this question. If I answer it incorrectly, I might get this question or this question. And so you, you move your way along through the assessment in a different manner. And, and the, the problems will be so much more real world based that it will be much less possible to really give kids um, skills in taking the test or the, the teaching to the test that you described. Um, I think it will be a much more authentic assessment. So. Uh, my, my hope and my thinking is that it'll be more about the instruction that the kids get all year long uh, than the preparation that might happen as the test approaches. And just one more question. On, <clears throat> on textbooks for this common core that we're, we're transitioning into, as far as uh, textbooks, when will be we be getting information on that? In math, the, the, well, the way the process works is the state releases a framework and then they release a set of criteria for texts and then an approved list of texts that we can choose from and then we purchase it. In math, the state has said that they will release the framework by November 30th of this year. And then in the winter, we'll release the list of approved texts. And then sometime in the spring, we can begin the process of looking at those materials and making choices. In language arts, that time when it's, it's, it's a little after that at some time in the next year. Um, I, I can't be more specific than that, but it's, it's math first and then language arts after. And once those frameworks are out and the list of approved and appropriate texts are ready, then we can begin the process of looking at those texts and deciding what materials to purchase. At the same time, we'll be finishing our work on the units of study, which will be a lot of guidance from our teachers about what specifically we want to teach. So that material that comes from our teachers will help guide that decision as well. We'll, 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 we're talking textbooks. We'll, 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 <clears throat> no, students have two textbooks, one in the class, one they can take home, correct? In the, in the secondary level, yes. Right. Uh, will, they be, will we be able to have, uh, allow them to have one to take home and one online? Are we to that phase yet, technology-wise? It's hard to ask, answer that question until we get further into the process of looking at the materials. Um, I, I, I think I, I just couldn't give you a good answer yet. But when we see the materials, we'd be able to answer that question. Mr. In, Mendes? In terms of the um, pilot assessment, I guess, for the spring uh, of 2014, 
Um, it indicates here that <coughs> it was announced that the field tests will be widely available, allowing states to offer them. Does that mean that it's up to each independent uh, individual district to, as to whether they're going to participate, or is it going to be something that uh, every district is expected to participate in? And uh, if so, um, well, let's go with that part of the question first. It's, it's kind of hot off the press information, and what we've, what we've been told at this point is that all districts will be expected to participate unless they don't have the technological capacity to participate because it doesn't have a paper pencil option. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's some question still as to whether it will be both language arts and math that is given or whether it will be one or the other. And that hasn't been, we haven't gotten that guidance yet. And as, as we look through the text of the, of the bill itself, it's, it's a little confusing, so we're not certain yet. Um, but, our, but our thinking is that all districts will take it, 3 through 8 and 11, and, and possibly in one or both subjects. Well then, that, that, that falls with the, the next part of my question, and that is, do we have the capability then to have all of our students take the assessment? We will. Te technology's there. We're on the way. It's, it's maybe not all the way there yet, but we will be there in time. Mr. Yes, Lewis you. is sitting with bated breath. <laughs> <laughs> He's nodding his head. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. I have a, not done with you yet. Um, <coughs> you said that CST for language arts and math are suspended. What about writing, social studies? I'm going to say I believe they are suspended as well okay. because writing is part of the language arts mm -hmm. and, and the specific exceptions I heard in the law were science, kappa, and then the EAP, which is that small portion that our 11th graders take that determines college readiness. So okay, and I, I would say no social studies. And what about CMA? They specifically called out Kappa. They did not, they did not call out CMA. So I would, I would assume that that is not going to continue. Thank you. Next, we'll hear the report on the summary of the 2013-14 inter-intra-district attendance permits. Mrs. Ford. Thank you. Uh, for 2013-14, we had 256 transfers into the district, and we had 688 transfers out of the district. For those transferring out of the district, 436 were um, annual renewals. We included that information with uh, the annotation. And then um, we had 252 students who were, uh, were new transfers out of the district. If we compare to last year, at this time last year, we had a net loss of 466 students. This year, the net loss is down by 34 students to 432. So we hope to continue that positive trend and with all the wonderful things that we're doing in education. I'm sure we will. Um, and we had, we also took, um, for the last year, we have been really trying to monitor the reason for transfers and try to get that information from parents. And what we found was 34% of parents uh, indicated that employment, childcare, um, and <coughs> siblings are the reason for transferring outside of the district. And 64% of parents uh, just gave the reason that they were continuing at the school that they had been at outside of the district. And then we had 2% that indicated other uh, pro special programs, welfare, safety, change of address for the reason that they were transferring out of the district. So we have been trying to monitor that information and be able to provide more detailed information to the board on that. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Ford? Mm -hmm. Mr. Schaefer. The, um, there's a loss of millions and millions of dollars. Is there a way that we can uh, market our school district to those that are renewing their, uh, to transfer, uh, renewing their transfer? Isn't there, what can we at Harupa sell to them? What, how, uh, most of them are going to Corona Narco, uh, the majority. What can we say about our district compared to Corona Narco to say, hey, this is what we can offer that they don't, or our API, or our proficiency in math and English are just as good. What can we do to market Harupa to Harupa 
parents and students to keep them here because in the last four or five years, it, it's, it's millions and millions of dollars. Uh, well, I think we are doing some things, and Dave can correct me if I'm, well, I'm wrong, but um, we are the River, Rivercrest Academy, the Preparatory Academy, and that's one area that we're providing you know, online instruction now and offering that to our students. That'll capture students that would otherwise go elsewhere for that type of a program. Um, the AAA Academy, you know, keeping those students here, you know, as well, and then continuing to look at, at the Common Core and moving in that direction, um, you know, as well. On the other side of it, it if we look at where the transfers um, are happening and from what schools, it is primarily from those schools that are on the west side of the district. And part of that I know is because, you know, the Corona Norco is over there. A lot of the transfers are to Corona Norco, although we do have some to Albert and other places as well. But uh, part of that is those shiny new schools. And that's something that at some point we have to address um, and we have to take a look at our facilities, which is what we're doing with the facilities and the technology committee. So we can really look at what do we need to do to make our schools not only academically attractive, but as well as, um, as uh, visually attractive to, to parents and to students as well. Uh, we have um, down Limonite on the West End, on the south of Limonite is the Corona Norco District, so, you know, Mel Alma is split between the Corona Norco District and it would be unified. Anything north of Limonite is, is uh, our district. But we find that those students or their parents perceive that their schools are better and they transfer out, even if they're living in Swan Lake or they're living in uh, Homecoming or you know, uh, Sky Country or you know, in the vicinity. And if they have an unpleasant experience at Hoover Valley High, for example, or, you know, they'll try Roosevelt High School. I don't know how easy it is to transfer over there, but, you know, I do agree we need to de decide or look at and try to figure out, is there anything wrong with our district? Are we not offering something that they are? Or, you know, if, if, if there's parity, then there's other reasons. If there isn't, uh, why is the perception that we can't educate those kids? The only thing that I can, I'm sorry, the only thing I can mention about that is when we did, we did start to really collect that data on special programs, and if there's anything that we're not offering that other districts are, and again, we only had um, two percent that fell into that category, and that includes other categories besides special programs. So I'm not seeing where a lot of the outgoing transfers are due to special programs, or programs that we're not offering here. I was going to say a couple of things. The laws regarding student transfers date back probably 15, 20 years now. And it was really the intent of the legislature to make it easy for parents to be able to pick school districts. There was, um, Doris Allen was an Orange County legislator who, in fact, the Allen Bill. And one of the primary motivations was um, both where parents work and where they have sitters available. Um, daycare, I think, is probably more current term. Show my age here. And so we, we have always tended, and I think surrounding districts have, been, have tended, to be very open about transfers, and particularly where there's jobs. So when it's an issue of jobs, and a certain number of them, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, were because of that. I think we're going to see as um, new houses come into the area, and within the plans of those developments, we're looking at building schools with, with the funds from the CFD, that some of those transfers will stop. The, the other thing, and, and this is not to say anybody else necessarily does this, but if you read the sports pages, you often see that students transfer because of sports. We have had a very strict policy in this district <coughs> to disallow transfers because of sports. Um, you know, we've seen where 
Um, works and it works every way. You get an outstanding player on a team, and all of a sudden, you've got 50 kids that want to transfer. We even had one student that transferred himself into a school in this district. You know, he got his grandmother to sign a name, and nobody really realized he didn't live here because he used her address. And so we've been very strict on that and open on the other end. And so it, I think, as Mrs. Ford pointed out, we are trying to at least offer some of these programs and hopefully you know as as funding opens up a little bit we'll see that the perception of people about the quality of schools is a very difficult issue because they look at what might be a bottom line api number which doesn't tell you how well a school is doing it tells you oftentimes more about the demographics of the school and i don't mean to be dismissive in any way, but you know, when you, you people should look at how a school's doing based on the population that's going, and our schools tend to do very well for that. But as you mentioned, that you know, in fact we're going to have a new development approved in the city that's in Corona Norco Unified. You know, part of um, our school district is in Eastvale. So it's you know city boundaries tend to often confuse things. And I I'm hoping as we've seen this year a little bit of that trend to reverse itself slowly. We've had growth in the district as well as at least a reversal in the trend. So I think that's a positive thing. And we certainly are going to look at, you know, if there are programs there that we could be offering that, that would serve our kids more as long as we find out that's the reason people are going. I did have just one more comment was, uh, you know, academic is important and academic programs and, and health programs, reading, reading and tutoring and math and, and science. Um, I think, though, if we had a little bit more emphasis on our sports programs and we would have uh, more school pride, you, your students take more um, ownership in their schools and they, many of them uh, play sports all their lives and they get to high school and they have a terrible team. You know, they don't have a winning team and they don't have that enthusiasm that goes with it. Not that sports is a priority, but it's a part of a, the school experience and it's, it's also a part of how students in different areas look at each other's school, where they're from. You know, I grew up in the same situation. I grew up in the same, uh, going to the same school district from kindergarten on. We happened to have a wonderful football team. It was, you know, it was always a winner. And, and that had, we had so much school spirit because of that. So I think you need a measure of that. You need to excel in all things if possible. And it's not always possible to excel in all things, but at least uh, bring it up a little bit, you know, if all of our sports teams are not doing well, maybe we don't have good coaches. We need to pay attention to that. I don't know. But I mean, as a parent who's been through it, you know, as one of the parents cheering on the sidelines, we're crying on the sidelines. So I know what it's about life. Okay, I have to be the cheerleader for the coaches. Um, <laughs> We, you know, each of our high schools run an average of about 17 sports programs. And some of them, um, how do I want to put this? Due to public interest, tend to get more press than other programs. Football, baseball, get an awful lot of press. And yet we have teams every year that go to CIF in a multitude of sports. We've had championship teams, some of the best across country come out of Rubido. Um, water polo and swimming particularly. Well, Patriot went to CIF, I think the second year they were high school in, in swimming. So we've had some outstanding programs. Some of those don't tend to be, this is gonna be an odd and maybe, I'm sure somebody will disagree with it, but um, students tend to transfer for football and baseball more than they do for other sports. And in fact, there was a column in the paper about the drama of high school sports, and that's not going to change. Um, but you know, we we I, we have some really really good coaches. Friday last week may not have been our best week ever in the football arena, but um, we're doing pretty good in other sports. And we'll come back in football. Mm -hmm.
Alright. I gave the cheerleader uniform at the next one. We'll hold you to that. No. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> All right, item C is to consider nominations for the 2013-14 election of members to the Riverside County Committee on School District Organization, SDO. Mr. Duchamp. Okay, you as a board have, a, is, is Mr. Mendez your, your representative to yes. the SDO? So it, there's apparently two parts to this process, although I believe you can nominate from the floor also. They're asking for nominations to be submitted by October 10th. And you can nominate to any of the areas that, that conform to the supervisorial districts. So there are vacancies um, in the two in the third supervisorial district and one in the fourth supervisorial district with terms expiring for Mike McElroy, um, first district, Charlotte Jones and Bob O'Donnell in the third district, and then a vacant seat in the fourth supervisorial district. So if you get names to us, we'll submit them to the county, but then also Mr. Mendez, I believe, still has to make a nomination from the floor on the night of that meeting, and they um, <coughs> take a vote that night and select the actual people, so. All right, thank you. Are there any other administrative reports or written communications? No. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we need to hold a public hearing session on the pupil textbook and instructional materials sufficiency program. Um, Mr. Dabrowski, would you like to give us a little information? Sure. At code 60119 specifies that governing boards are required to hold a public hearing for text, pupil textbook and instructional material compliance. And that item will be, the resolution will be under item D. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to open the public hearing session on the Pupil Textbook and Instructional Materials Sufficiency Program. Are there any comments from the public? Seeing none, we will close this public session and move on to action session. Item A, approve routine action items by consent. Items A, A1 through 11. Move for approval. I have a motion by Mr. Hernandez, Mr. Mendez and a second by Mr. Hernandez. All those in student board members, all those in favor say aye or show me your paddles. Either way, <laughs> opposed. And board, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes 2-0 student and 5-0 board. Item B, award bid number 13-14-01 PU, District Standard Furniture, Mrs. Ford. Oh, at the uh, August 5th board meeting, the board authorized staff to solicit bids for District Standard Furniture. The bids were advertised in the press, uh, the record, and our district website. We had six bid packets that were received and they were opened on September 5th. Two vendors submitted no bid responses and four submitted uh, complete bids. Uh, due to the need and the, uh, the wide variety of furniture that's needed, administration is recommending that the board award the bid to all four vendors, and that would be Verco, Office Depot, Cul Culver, Newland, and Lakeshore. Move for approval. Thank you. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Mendez. Second. A second by Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Schaefer, did you have a question? You've got here that uh, the district annually spends thirty to 50000 so what, what will this, the estimate be? Um, right. What, what this is, is, I think we actually brought something to you um, before, but it, we're probably around $40,000 right now. We have quite a bit of furniture that needs to be replaced. And what we will do is we will look at the least expensive item that we can get that would meet the, the need of the student, whether it's a, a chair or a table or a desk, you know, whatever that might be. So we'll always go with the, the least expensive item 
Um, however, we will also go with those items that we can get in a timely manner, because in some cases they're out of stock on items, which is why you'll see a duplicate on some of those items on the list. I would imagine that in, in addition to looking at the least expensive um, in terms of the specific item, we would also take a look at the quality as well, because sometimes we may be penny with penny wise and pound foolish, or whatever that saying goes, that we may purchase something that is inexpensive, but it may not be nearly as long lasting as say something of a better quality yet with you know maybe some slight additional cost. Absolutely, and when we uh, the bid packet was put together, we also look for warranties on items as well. So if there's any items with issues, you know, we would be able to return those items and get an exchange item for that. And Paula, just for clarification, this is just the companies that we're going to use. This isn't saying that we've given you a carte blanche to order everything. The orders will still be coming right. back to us if they're at or above the predetermined amount. Yes, that's correct. Uh, they'll be, and we'll bring what the funding source would be for any um, orders that we would be uh, bringing forward for your approval to purchase. Thank you. And so administration recommends the board award bid number 13-14-01PU district standard furniture to Burco, Office Depot, Culver Newland, and Lakeshore Learning Materials based on the specific commodities listed with the corresponding vendors above. Move for approval. We already have, oh, I think we we have a motion in a second. Yes. So, <laughs> Thank you. I students, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Board, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 2-0 students and 5-0 board. Item C, approved purchase of Aruba Airways. Mrs. Ford. Uh, yes. Um, administration is requesting approval to purchase Aruba Airways as the district expands its wireless uh, network infrastructure and wireless network devices. Uh, it's in need of a system to manage the number, location, and the types of devices that are able to access the network. Aruba Airways allows for this type of management and we did receive three quotes of uh, vector resources. It came in at $27,406, IT outlet at $28,775, uh, CDWG came in at $33,156, and the purchase will be funded through the Microsoft K-12 voucher uh, program. Move to approve the purchase of the Aruba Airway uh, proposal. Thank you, we have a motion by Mr. Okay. Mendez. A second by Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Schaefer. On this uh, Aruba Airwave, is this a, does, does, does Vector, is this a Vector product or are these three vendors uh, bidding on this Aruba Airwave? The three bid, uh, vendors are bidding on the Aruba Airwave. It's not a Vector product. Why can't we go directly to who makes Aruba Airwave? They sell it through um, what they call VARs, value-added retailers. They don't actually sell it straight to the, to the end user. So this device, will there, will there be, if this is a device I take it, correct? It's a device and software, yes. Okay. Will each site have one of these? It'll be centrally located in the, in the district office in our data center. Which will monitor all the sites? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, seeing no more questions. Student board member? <laughs> Thank you. Board, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1 0 student and 5 0 board. Item D, adopt resolution number 2014 13, sufficiency of pupil textbooks and instructional materials for 2013 14. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. Ed Code 60119 requires that we adopt a resolution um, stating that we have sufficient textbooks or instructional materials for each pupil. And um, just for your information, we, we do. And we were inspected by Riverside County Office of Education staff. Nine of our schools were inspected each year. They pick a certain amount of schools at elementary and secondary levels. And um, passed once again with flying colors. 
we would recommend that the board adopt resolution number 2014-13, sufficiency of pupil textbooks and instructional materials for 2013-14. Move for approval with a question. We have a motion by Mr. Mendez and a second by Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Mendez. In addition to the uh, monitoring that the county does um, in this area, are there specific reports that the district uh, must file to the state um, indicating that um, we have sufficient uh, textbooks or <coughs> what's the rest of the accountability process besides our approval here? Yeah. I think it's the, county. Okay. The, the county actually follows, files those reports. So they, they, they are the monitoring agents, so they file the report stating that we do in fact. Thank you. Any other questions? Student board member. Thank you. And board, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1 0 student, 5 0 board. Item E, adopt resolution number 2014 14, the resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Hooper Unified School District designating the vacant Limonite K 8 property surplus and authorizing the solicitation of offers for specified entities. Mrs. Ford. I make a motion to adopt resolution number 2014-14. I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Schaefer and a second by Mr. Mendez. Any questions or comments? Student board member. Aye. And board, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1-0 student and 5-0 board. Item F, adopt resolution number 2014-15, authorizing the temporary transfer of funds from the general fund to the adult education fund, Mrs. Ford. Make a motion to adopt resolution number 2014-15. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Schaefer, a second by Mr. Mendez. Any <coughs> questions or comments? Student board member. Aye. Board, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 1-0 student, 5-0 board. Item G, adopt resolution number 2014-16, resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Harupa Unified School District, authorizing the execution and recording of grant deeds for Nueva Vista Continuation High School and Mission Middle School to reflect current ownership as Harupa Unified School District. Mrs. Ford. Make a motion to adopt resolution number 2014-16. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Schaefer and a second by Mrs. Johnston. Any questions or comments? Student board. Aye. Board members, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 1-0 students, 5-0 board. Item H, act on student discipline cases. We have one case, suspended expulsion case, case 10-211. Move for approval. Have a motion by Mr. Herne Mr. Mendez. Second. A second by Mrs. Johnston. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes 5-0. And item <laughs> I, approve personnel matters, approve personnel report number five. Mrs. Rush. Administration recommends the board approve personnel report number five as printed. Move for approval of personnel report number five. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Mendez, a second by Mr. Schaefer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. And board member comments and committee reports. We'll start with Mr. Mendez. Um, I just would like to uh, have a follow-up on the concerns that the parents brought up uh, earlier in the meeting today, as uh, Mr. Sean indicated, and uh, we'll be reporting back to the board. Thank you. Mr. Schaefer. Um, I, too, would, uh, it's a, uh, time is of the essence on <coughs> the concerns of those parents with whatever's going on with that bad gate at I know. But again, uh, my heart, and I'm sure a lot of your hearts are hurting due to the senseless act of violence in Washington, D.C. today at a, at, at a naval base. So my prayers go out to those affected by this uh, 
Census Act, and uh, especially to those that lost loved ones. So uh, just uh, thank God that we're here another day, and uh, we're among friends. We're here to help those that need an education, uh, that want an education, and it's, it's our duty to make sure they get a good education. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Johnston. Well, I don't have anything in mind, but um, I, I have heard the whole story of what you alluded to, but I understand there was another shooting um, of multiple people at that location. And I think it goes back to my thoughts on the previous attacks that we've had of um, many people who, or those people who have been the shooters have been determined to be mentally ill in some manner. And I think that if we can identify those issues earlier in the lives of some of these people, we could hopefully, you know, prevent those actions. I mean, we're never ever going to prevent all of them, but uh, we have to recognize that these aren't rational people, and uh, you know, they're very difficult to live with, they're very difficult to manage, as we see in our classrooms. So um, it's, a, it's a very sad thing that they, they have access to weapons where they are not properly evaluated. He was a uh, what he did serve in the Navy, and uh, somewhere along the line, they got haywire. So it is sad. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Well, I appreciate. I do believe it's Mr. Thompson and his uh, group of individuals to come and and to voice their concerns. I, being a a graduate of Iron Buckle and knowing where that back gate is. I kind of wonder why in the world are we having parents walk all the way around? Uh, there's got to be some way to resolve that problem, especially uh, Black Slipper has been there for years. It was there when I grew up. Uh, the concern of the parents, first of all, is the safety along Mission Boulevard is uh, a very valid concern, and, and I brought this to attention to several parents that keep talking about uh, bus service for their children. I think. Uh, we really need to look at problems like this immediately, not just uh, hey, report back, but we need to resolve this, uh, if not yesterday, at least tomorrow. Um, and I know that the staff will do so. But to, to have kids and parents and uh, social demographics of that area, you know, a lot of people don't have vehicles that they can come up to the district office and complain and a lot of them don't understand the basic process of hey you got to make a report when somebody's trying to pick up your kid and maybe we need to educate the parents just a little bit more on hey don't let these kind of things go because later on they'll grab that kid and do things to that kid that, that don't need to be done but I think the thing is that uh, I'm glad they came and it gives us an opportunity to, to take action Thank you. And I want to remind um, the rest of the board that we do have on October 18th and 19th, we have CSBA meetings to attend. And when you've got the information either sent from CSBA directly or from Ms. Collins that there is homework for us to do, you need to go online and review that so that we can get that have that background knowledge. See, I'm telling you early so you can get it done. <laughs> and to remind everyone about the um, district picnic, if you haven't gotten your reservation into Denise or let her know if you can't attend, if you get that in as quickly as possible so that if you want to eat, you have food there for you. Other than that, thank you all for coming, and we will see you on October 7th.